Peter Atia told me that VO2 max is the single most important metric when looking at someone's longevity. How much truth do you think is in that? I, I think that absolutely he's right. I think VO2 max is one of the single. And and the, and the thing I love about it is that it's something that you can measure. It's a biomarker. I think it's one of the most important things. Absolutely. And there's, you know, there's, there's some evidence that like doing doing this vigorous exercise is important, but it has to be like a longer interval type of exercise. So, you know, at least one minute, that would be sort of the minimum, but like better if you can get to four minutes. So there's something called the Norwegian four by four protocol. And that's four minutes at the highest intensity that you can maintain for that entire four minutes, hmm. followed by three minute recovery of like light, light exercise. I mean, you want your heart rate to come down so that you could do it again four times, right? So sounds the Norwegian- miserable. It yes. Sounds absolutely miserable. The Norwegian four by four. Um, and, you know, there's there was a study and I like, I like this is one of the studies that inspired me. And this is this was a study out of uh, UT Southwest in Dallas. And um, the study took 50 year olds that were healthy, but they were not physically active. So they didn't have like type two diabetes and all that, but they weren't, active. They're also detrained. Exactly. They're detrained. And they put them on a pretty intensive training protocol for two years. Okay. Two years. It was a two-year intervention and it was a progressive protocol. So obviously when you have an untrained person, you don't just write out the bat, Norwegian four by four, day one. No, that's not going to happen. So <laughs> it took them six months to kind of work up their, their, their training, right? Their endurance. And by the time they got to their six-month mark, they were doing about you know, four hours a week of what's called maximal intensity exercise. So this is vigorous. This is this is four hours a week of maximal intensity. Yeah. Wow. So they were doing so they were basically doing it was like is as high as you can maintain, you know, a in vigorous intensity workout for 30 minutes, basically. So they're doing these 30 minute workouts where you're doing like 75, 80% max heart rate for 30 minutes. Okay. So, I but mean, they're doing that eight times a week. Yeah. I mean, so no, they're also doing, they're doing other things as well. So they're doing, it's not, when I say four hours a week, they're exercising four hours a week. Oh, they're right. also I doing, thought you meant they were doing four hours of this sorry, Norwegian no, 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 four no, no, by four. No, 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 no. They were doing exercise four hours a week. Okay. Um, but they were doing, um, a majority of that was maximal intensity exercise. So a lot of that was, they were doing like 30 minute sessions of okay. this. Right. And I think they were probably doing like one and a half to two hours of that. Yep. And then they were also doing some strength training. And then they were doing the Norwegian four by four. So it was kind of a, a nice sort of balanced. And then the control group was doing this sort of, I say strength training, but it was more, I guess, body weight, you know, kind of stuff. Um, the control group was doing that. So it was a type of sort of body weight training, but it wasn't high intensity. Like it wasn't like the the CrossFit kind of stuff that you could do. It was it was more like lower stretching kind of stuff, maybe yoga-ish kind of thing. And um, so so after two years, these people like the, the the cardiac structure. So as we age, our heart gets smaller and it gets stiffer. And this happens, it's like part of aging um, that results in a lot of things. So cardiovascular disease risk goes up, but also like your exercise performance and capacity goes down. So, so after that two years of, you know, doing this pretty vigorous intensity exercise protocol, their, um, the people, the 50 year olds, they reversed their cardiac structure aging by 20 years. So their hearts were looking more like 30 year old hearts versus 50 year old hearts. And this is after two years of doing this. And to me, it was so motivating to go, wow, these 50 year olds can do this. Like these were untrained people who don't usually work out. And by the end of this two years, I mean, they were like getting at it. Um, and so I've, you know, kind of stepped up my my game a bit. Also, like I've got a coach coming and I'm working with um, two, two days a week and to do I'm doing a lot of uh, it's like a resistance training, but like kind of interval as well. So I'm getting the high heart rate and and that interval. Training. So funny to see Peter Tier and yourself kind of converge on this new it's not it's not as if it's new, but it was definitely something that I wasn't hearing about four years ago. I wasn't hearing people talk about this. Everything was zone two. It was, you know, like go slow to go fast or whatever the tagline is. And um one of the problems with zone two is that you need quite a high duration, like by design, because you know, forty five minutes or an hour multiple times per week, which is actually difficult. So lots of benefits, 
of improving VO2 max, what are, take us through the Norwegian 4x4 again, and then w what else is in there? If there was a protocol or a number of protocols you were going to design, here's a program that you can take away today into your gym and do that will help to improve your VO2 max. What would you tell people? I would say the Norwegian 4x4 is by far the best, and you're going to get the, if, for the people that are really um, determined and committed that would be it. That would be the four minutes of the exercise intensity as hard as you can go and maintain it for that entire four minutes. So Just obviously- dig into that. What, what do you mean? As hard as you can go and maintain it. What does that mean? It means you don't want to go like all out, like like 95% of your, your max heart rate um, because then you can only last for like a minute you know and so so then you're going to go down you're going to you're going to slow down right so what it means is like you want to go you know it, it might for some people it might be like 75 percent max heart rate right so some people might be 80 percent but you want to go as hard as you can for the four minutes uh without like really slowing down so you kind of have to pace yourself a little bit mm -hmm. but you don't want to go too slow right like you, you definitely can't be talking like you should not be able to talk for sure when you're doing it so it's hard enough that you just absolutely can't talk but it's not all out so four minutes four minutes and then three minutes of totally light like you're going all the way this is like you know you're you're like back to like zone one if you want to <laughs> call it something if so your heart can come come down if your heart can quickly. come down <laughs> yeah and you're doing that for three minutes because you want to give your you want to recover so that you can do it again and it and you repeat it it's it's a four it's a four time protocol so you do it once and then you repeat it three times or you just yep. call it the four by four i think that's probably one of the the best protocols to improve vo2 max now uh dr martin gabala um i've had him on my podcast he's a real expert on these high intensity interval training protocols he does a lot of research on it at mcmaster university um in ontario canada and he also says you there you know there are there's evidence that a one minute protocol, so like just even doing like an interval, like one minute interval, and then doing that like, you know, a few times also can improve VO2 max. So that's a little easier and also it's easier. Like I like, I, I do one minute intervals. Um, I'm trying to now incorporate the four by four into my routine, um, which is coaches help with that. So, um, but it, I imagine it is, it's a motivation thing, which is probably one of the biggest hurdles to get over that just... <clears throat> If you've got any program in front of you that isn't the Norwegian 4x4 for the day, you go, ah, maybe it's back and biceps, or ah, maybe I'll just go for a little jog. It's like, manana, manana, manana. Yeah, it is. It, but again, like I said, you do have to do, you try to make it consistent. So, uh, Frequency per week. Well, the Norwegian 4x4 would be like one time a week. Oh, okay. And that's, yeah. that's, that's, the, the, that's dose. the hard day. That's less That's, that's less the miserable. hard day. It is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is there any benefit to going twice per week? Probably, yeah. <laughs> but it'd been so much better. But if these, you'd said, but these fifty-year-olds, oh, no, 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 yeah, these fifty-year-olds did it one time a week for two years, and they reversed their cardiac structure aging by twenty years. Um, of course, they were they were also doing other vigorous intensity exercise. It wasn't the torturous Norwegian four by four. Yep. You know, like so, if Norwegian four by four is gold standard at the moment for improving VO two max. What would be some examples of other vigorous exercise uh, uh, workouts? What else is in that bucket? Well, people can do what they enjoy doing. So you can go for a run. Like I often go for a run and, you know, I'm doing 75, 80% my max heart rate. Uh, usually it's like a 20 minute run that I do that, you know? So like as, as, as intense as you can maintain for 20 minutes, like that's what you want to do. You want to kind of get that, you get a feeling for that. Um, so if you like runs, because there's a lot of benefits to running, you're out in nature. Well, I guess some people do it on a treadmill. I'm not so big on treadmills. Like I, I'll do them like when I go to a gym or something traveling, but I like running out in nature. I think there's, it's just, it's, there's lots of benefits to doing that. Um, some people like to get on their bike and cycle. So like you can just get on your bike and do a 20 to 30 minute, uh, 75, 80% max heart rate cycle, right? So what we're aiming for here is 75 to 80% max heart rate for around about 20 minute exposure. You can, or you can do, you could do like a high intensity interval training. So, um, so high intensity interval training would be, you're going to, you're going to go more than 85, 80%, right? You might go, you're going to do like more of like a sub maximal perhaps, uh, perhaps even a maximal 
interval. So you can go up to 90, 95% max heart rate. So that would be, I mean, obviously you can only maintain that for like so long, right? Some people might be 30 second pushes. Yeah, like or a Tabata animated. style thing perhaps. Tabata. I do a lot of Tabatas as well. Um, oftentimes I like to do something every day, um, most days of the week. And it's funny, I kind of adopted this this routine when I was I was kind of trying to uh, do a little bit like Joe Rogan's Sober October, but it was like every day October, I was trying to work out every day. And I noticed, I was like, I could do this. I'm doing it for like one month. And I don't, I wasn't going as hard as like the those guys doing the Sober October where they were like competition. It was like, they were just- Air bike um, in the sauna. Like, if you do something, every, do something every day. So sometimes I'll do like a 10 minute Tabata where I get on there and I just go hard for 10 minutes. It's 20, you know, it's most of the time I'll do a 45 second on, um, 15 second off. So it's a three to one ratio. I really like that one, but sometimes I'll do 20 second on, 10, uh, 10 second off. So it's like, I do both, but like even just 10 minutes, again, I time it around like, like I got, I'm gonna go do work. I'm gonna, I wanna feel motivated. I wanna feel better. I wanna be more focused in all my game. And I just get on there for the bike for 10 minutes and do it. We'll get back to talking to Rhonda in one minute, but first I need to tell you about Ketone IQ. 60% of Tour de France riders use Ketone IQ to help them with their energy and mental clarity. And that's why I use it as my pre-workout. I don't want to have caffeine upon waking, but I still want to have energy to make sure that I have a good session, which is why I use this. It gives me really clean energy. There's no jitters. There's no crash afterward. And it massively helps with mental clarity. Ketones are the brain and body's preferred fuel source, but getting into a state of ketosis is hard. You often have to fast for a long time or restrict carb intake or exercise your glycogen stores away, but that can take days. Ketone IQ delivers ketones to your bloodstream within minutes. It has no sugar, no caffeine, and hundreds of five-star reviews. Best of all, they've got a 60-day money-back guarantee, so you can buy it and try it for 59 days. And if you do not like it, they'll give you your money Back. Right now, you can get a 30% discount off your first subscription order by going to the link in the description below or heading to hvmn.com slash modernwisdom. That's hvmn.com slash modernwisdom. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you enjoyed that clip with Rhonda, you will love the full-length three-hour-long podcast, which you can watch right here. Go on. Tap it.